Are you ready to take your alcohol inks from this to this? Then stick with me because I am going to walk you through this technique step by step so that you gain the confidence you need to try it for yourself. So go grab your supplies and let's create. I have a piece of craft plastic paper and different things to make circles with and I'm going to place my first container on the paper and apply the alcohol ink around the circle. I am going to quickly dry the ink in place with my low heat hair dryer, keeping the container right where it is. This is going to create a really concentrated area of color and that's what you want. I have a fine tip bottle with some isopropyl alcohol in it and I'm going to place a drop on the outer edge of the ink. With my Tim Holtz blower tool, I gently squeeze it to blow a small amount of air at a time and I blow the isopropyl alcohol into the dried ink and then blow the ink outwards. I continue to do this until all of the ink is dry. I am going to take another small amount of ISO and add it to the outer edge of the dried ink and then repeat the process of blowing small amounts of air to move the ink back and forth until the ink is dry. It's important to try not to get any of the ink inside of the circle if you want all of that white space. The blower tool is great for this because you have so much control of how much air comes out. And when the ink is dry, you can move on to the next section. This time I added a small amount of ISO in the direction I want the ink to go. This helps move the ink easier around the page. If you want more of a wispy look on the ends, then you need to move a lot of that ink back to the circle. I am going to start on my second circle by choosing a different color ink and a different sized cap, and I'm going to overlap the second circle over the first one. This is going to add a lot of interest and in some areas create a whole new color. It's important to dry the ink in place, so when you add the ISO, you have more control of how much color you move around. How much air you puff out of the blower tool is the most important thing to master for this technique. So remember to lightly press the tool as I am showing you here. I am barely squeezing it, letting out the littlest amount of air. You can also flick your wrist while squeezing out some air to get more movement of the color. As I move the color back and forth, you could see that I'm trying to blend it out and create a wispy effect by pushing the color back into the circle. And if you're not getting the wispy effect that you want, like I didn't here, I am going to actually add a little bit more isopropyl alcohol and that's going to mute the color. As I move the ink back and forth, I wanted to talk a little bit about ink transfer. That gold you see was dried onto my container, so when I added the alcohol ink around it, it transferred onto the paper. So keep this in mind when you're creating yours and clean off your caps if you don't want your previous color to transfer to your next circle. I am going to finish up my second circle and start on my third one. And at this point, I'm starting to think about composition, and I use that term very loosely because I barely passed art class in high school. So even though I may know simple things like rules of three, I really don't like to think of all the technicalities because then I feel stuck and that is not a good place to be. So instead, I go with what feels right, and I add the third circle knowing I want a fourth circle in the upper right hand corner. I also want this circle to be more of the focal point and stand out, so I add a little bit more of the alcohol ink around the circle. This is going to make the color very concentrated, and you're going to get a lot of contrast when you're starting to blend out the color. I added the third circle over top of the second circle to add more interest. At first, I thought I would go in with Q-tips to clean the ink out of the center of the circle, but as I was working on it, I liked that I had a couple with more white space and one that was filled in with the opposite color. As I'm moving the color back and forth, the blue is starting to mix in with the purple, creating a whole new color and adding so much interest to the piece. If I see the section I'm working on is turning out how I want, I will blow the excess isopropyl alcohol off of the paper, and I like to have a piece of heavy cardstock underneath what I'm working on to catch the the excess ink. I liked how the purple looked in the center of the blue circle, so I wanted to create the same effect, blending some of the blue into the purple circle, but I also didn't want the circle full of color, so I kept some white space. I am going to add the fourth circle in the upper right hand corner, and I didn't blend any of the color out because I felt there was enough on the page already. I add some metallic with rose alloy ink the same way I added the color, just putting a little bit around the edge of the container, and I'm going to dry it in place. I'm taking some of the rose alloy alcohol ink and adding some splatters with a paintbrush. And because I'm a firm believer there can never be too many splatters, I'm going to take some Monsoon and Boysenberry and add some splatters around the page. 
Without even realizing it, I ended up adding three circles with the Rose Alloy Alcohol ink, creating an odd number of circles after all. I'm going to dry the circles in place with my Conair hair dryer. As I finish up this piece, I'm realizing that I don't have any idea what I want to do with it just yet, and that's okay because... Creating with alcohol inks is so fun, and if you're not ready to stop, be sure to check out this playlist right here. I share lots of techniques, tips, my favorite supplies, and even how to turn those backgrounds into cards. I'll see you right here.